So although we're going to sculpt the character from scratch, we're going to use a pre-made uh, skeleton. So you go to File, Append. This is after you've downloaded the skeleton. And in my downloads, I've got the default humanoid rig. You can double click that, go into the object folder, add the armature, and here we go. This is the uh, skeleton that'll work well in VR chat. So let's use it as a guide. I'm going to also, over here, with the armature selected, I'm going to go to object data, viewport display, and click in front. That'll just display this all the time. So you see when we add a mesh and icosphere, uh, this is showing in front, so we can use it as a guide. Down here in the icosphere settings, I'm going to turn up the subdivisions and make it a little smoother. You can start with any shape, but this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to move it so it's around the hips area is usually where I start. And uh, I'm going to scale it down in edit mode. So uh, I'm just going to scale the whole thing down a little bit so I can use it. There we go. Uh, but we're not going to use edit mode anymore. We're going to use sculpt mode for everything else. So let's look at this. Sculpt mode. Uh, we've got all these different brushes. By default, it's just a draw. I'm going to undo that because what I want is the left and right to be exactly the same. For that, I'm going to click this mesh symmetry option on the X axis. That's what the uh, armature is always going to be. That's what all you always want to go for in VR chat. So, um, I think if I hold Alt middle click, it'll go to where my cursor is pointing and look at a certain part of it. So now when I sculpt, it's on both sides. And let me show you some other tools. Uh, you can hold Control and click, and it'll push inward. This will sculpt outward. But uh, you can mess with the strength, radius and really make some big changes. Uh, I don't really want that there. Man, we gotta make a character. You notice that as I go, this is sort of getting stretched out where these parts of the mesh are tiny. You can see these vertices are very far apart. These just, these faces are bigger. So there's an easy way to fix that now, and you just press Control R in sculpt mode. Oops. That's way lower detail than we wanted. I'm going to undo that. And we can set this up here in under remesh is what we're doing. So we can set the this setting with shift R. Shift R and then make these squares really small. If you get too small, it's going to lag your computer. But try it. Try something like this. And now click control R again. Okay, it's just remade the shape. It's tiny, tiny shapes. It's very nicely made. Uh, it'll be a little better if you turn on fixed poles. You should just always have that on. I don't think there's much of a downside. So now uh, when we sculpt, we have much more detail. And the detail is equal in all the different parts of the mesh. Until I start sculpting again, and then I have to, once I notice it's getting kind of stretchy, control R again. There we go. Um, Note that if you press Shift R and make this back to here and Control R again, you're going to lose all that detail. So make sure you're not going down in detail until you're at the very end. So now let me show you some of the other tools. So this is a little bumpier than I want it. Uh, I'm going to use the Smooth tool. This is one of my top tools I use just because. The process I did so far made some weird looking bumps. It, you could keep them if you like them, but uh, there we go. This is going to be the character, I guess. I haven't decided what it should look like yet, but the great thing about sculpt mode is you don't have to plan things out so much. You don't have to be so logical and just let your creativity go. So one of the things we can do is the another big tool I use all the time, the snake hook, especially when making limbs or anything that protrudes outwards. We got that whole uh, thing. Okay, that was supposed to be a leg. If I'm going to undo that. If you want to um, make like something straight, try and go into the side view or front view or something like that. Then you got a lot more control over it. Oops. 
Let's try the front view to make a leg. Yeah, that's that's good. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go into object mode. I should have said to put this in dick view or something like that. Okay, now that's less in the way. I'm selecting the mesh again, back to sculpt mode. Okay. Um something you'll notice, this gets really stretched out. Um we can try and fix that with control R. And it looks okay, but a better way to do uh, snake hook is with din topo. Uh, now this is a separate way to sort of keep things from being stretched out. It's also a rematch tool, but it happens in real time. So if I pull this out, I mean, let me pick a better area. Let me try and um, get the torso made. It it works a bit better. Uh, you can. I'm gonna undo that. You can should probably turn this down a little. The lower this value is, the uh the more detailed the in topo creates things. So that's a little better, but it still gets really messed up at the end. I'll I'll, I'll make it poorly so you can see. Uh, like there's these things hanging off. So I'm gonna undo that and let me show you with a snake hook tool under brush. You can turn the hardness up. Uh, you either want to make the radius larger if you're having issues, or turn the hardest up until you get the sort of the thing you want. If the hardness is too high, it doesn't look very organic. It looks very hard, as you'd imagine. But uh, there we go. I kind of want this to curve a little back. This is good. Uh, so I'm going to use the grab tool. I would only really use Dentopo for the snake hook or for painting like tiny details on things at the very end. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to keep going with what I had. Uh, you don't have to hit Control R again right now, because, or you can, you, you might want to, just to get this a little nicer and a little more uniform. You're just hitting it all the time. It, it shouldn't lag your computer too much. If it does, just create a character with less detail. Um, so I'm going to turn the radius up. And... You should learn the keyboard shortcuts for your favorite tools and settings because you can be, just be using them over and over, switching between them and tweaking things. So there's a good torso. Um, let me show you another tool so I can finish these legs. Uh, where is it? The inflate tool. This can both inflate and deflate, uh, just like you can sculpt inwards by um, holding control. You can hold control to shrink things down or expand things outwards. You do this too much, it'll sort of expand into each other and get messed up. You can fix that with a smooth tool, but I'm just gonna undo that. Uh, what I wanna do is make this leg thicker and um, see how it's sort of collapsing into itself. And you're gonna need the smooth tool to fix that, okay. And um, now we have thicker legs to work with so we can add detail. I'm going to control R again, just because it's stretched out. Now that we have thicker legs, uh, I'm going to look from the front again, and snake hook. And remember, turn on in topo for the best snake hook options. I'm going to turn hardest down a little bit. Really got to play with that to learn the best way. But if you snake hook things out too much with low hardness, you just end up with mm, a mess. But at that point, I suggest undoing and doing it again. So, uh, again, I ended up with this shape. It's kind of neat. It's not what I wanted. Uh, but you could you could just use it. But uh, since we can change things around in sculpt mode so easily, uh, I'm going to do that. Where's the grab tool? D. I'm used to using the keyboard shortcuts. I think I'm going to start teaching you the keyboard shortcuts for these top use tools right now. Uh, because you, you really need that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be Spending a lot of time switching between two tools. Uh, and I'm going to inflate, which is the I button. I. And add some body to that. And con use control R. Oh. If, you, if you have two Dintopo on, the control R thing doesn't work. The, the remesh, it's called. So now we have a lot of shape. Uh, at least for the lower body and torso. I'm, I'm going to work on the torso more, but before I do that, uh, let's snake hook out some arms and head. 
I'm going to turn the topo on again. And the radius is pretty big, so I could pull it all the way out. I'm looking at it from the front, so it's pretty uh, even, not jutting out in the wrong direction. And here's a big head and neck. And so we can add more detail. I'm going to turn off in topo and control R again. And X is the draw. Most details you're going to add with a draw once once you've gotten there. And if you have a, a draw, speaking of, a drawing tablet, um, I'm going to hold control to push in these eyeballs, sort of goggles. Um, if you have a drawing tablet, um, that'll help a lot. You can do it with a mouse. It's not that bad with a mouse, but the drawing tablet will give you a little more control uh, for sculpting. Uh, you can use the pen pressure up here, turn those on and off if you have a drawing tablet. Otherwise, just, just ignore that. And uh, I'm trying to make an inside of the mouth at least a little bit so I can add uh, visemes later like I usually do. And uh, don't we want like eyeball movement? So uh, maybe I'll, I'll make eyes sticking out. Okay. And uh, you can do all kinds of things with snake hook, not just limbs. I'm going to add some, some hair, hair like appendages. I'm not using Dintopo right now because I'm just using, making very small changes. You can see it's a little messed up here. Uh, Shift S for the smooth tool. And um, you can see you hover over them and see what the shortcut is if you ever forget. Uh, just use the smooth wherever it's messed up looking. And don't forget to Control R. Uh, which can also help. Sometimes you have to control R and then do a little smoothing. And just when it looks right, it should be right. If it looks wrong, there's probably something wrong with it that could affect things later on. So, and um, I'm just going to add a little more detail to the chest. Give it some shape, give the arms some, some shape. Sculpting on just one side, so I'm going to go over to the other side. Or I could also use the uh, inflate tool. I, uh, by the way, F makes it makes the radius controls the radius, and uh, uh, what is it? I think I just I don't know the shortcut for this. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna look it up now, but you can look that up. What am I doing? I was inflating, inflate. And you can do some things to make it more muscular or whatever. But you kind of have to use the draw tool to paint in the muscles. There's a lot of other tools you can play with. This will get you uh, to do pretty much anything. Um, with just these ones I've shown you. The pose tool might also be useful. Like say if you, uh, you put the, the legs in at the wrong angle. And you just want to fix that quick. You can make little adjustments with that, as you can see. Let me use that and just make this a little weirder, just for fun. Okay. There, so this is a character. Oh, right, right. The the fingers. We're gonna need some fingers. Fingers are hard. Uh, we of course use the snake hook tool to pull out the fingers. Um. I don't feel like moving all these bones around later, so I'm going to try and use the grab tool G, use F to make the selection bigger. As you see, if it's a small selection, I'll only move the top of it. Uh, the selection is in 3D, basically, uh, or the radius, as it's called. So I'm just moving the... Um, the stub of the hand. Now I'll X the draw tool to flush it out a little bit more. Maybe inflate tool. So a little more to work with. Looks a little more hand like. Now we we have it set up so it's just at the fingers or at the finger bones, and I can start pulling these out with in topo and the snake hook. So the trouble with fingers is that they're so close together usually that you'll accidentally like merge the two like that. Well, that's a fun way to make things, but uh, 
It won't work very well as fingers. Uh, this is the optimal amount of hardness and radius, I think, for what I'm doing right now. Those two fingers merge together a little, but I think it's okay. And try and select at the edge as much as possible, or you'll be pulling out of the top of it instead of the side. And these came out a little weird. I'm going to have to fix them. But, uh... I don't care about this being perfect, but they should be at least close to the bones, more or less on the bones. Otherwise, they're not going to rig properly. It's going to take a lot longer to do that stuff. Let me just add the um, thumb bone. Oops, that's a bit big. Remember that it's based on how far you're zoomed in as well. The Dintopo detail is based on how zoomed in you are. So if I zoom in a lot, you get a lot more detail out of it. But uh, I can show you what the pose tool is useful for. I can just fix this thumb so that it's rotated down where the, the guide is. Maybe use the grab tool a little bit. Stretch this out with the grab tool. There we go. Everything's pretty much on the bones all across. Uh, only issue is um, going to go into edit mode, tab on this, uh, the armature, and put the base of the eye bones where the eye is. You generally going to want to use something like spherical eyes or something like that. This is very, it's going to be very bendy, sloppy eye bones. And um, going to make the head bone a lot taller just so that I can um, uh, auto weight it better. It's not going to affect unity except for the fact that we're going to auto weight this now. We're going to do the rigging now. Um, you can remesh this and there's a lot of tools and stuff to do that properly. I think this is good enough for me. So um, in terms of if I go into edit mode, you see there's uh, triangles, there's stuff like that. Uh, oh, uh, I have to go into sculpt mode and control R once, one last time. Okay, so if I go into edit mode, you'll see it's, it's mostly quads. There's a lot of loops and stuff. It's all very pretty clean. You can get it to be a lot cleaner with other tools, but I think this is clean enough for me. So... Um, I'm going to do what I usually do in the other tutorials now, which is, uh, first step is select on, select the mesh, and then shift, hold shift, and select the uh, armature, and press control P, and automatic weight. And that'll take a bit. And, uh-oh. I think I might have way too many triangles. Uh, you can see how many triangles you are by right-clicking down here and clicking Scene Statistics. It's 180,000. Yeah, so for PC, you should have under 70,000. It's going to be very poor. Uh, we can fix that, actually, by... Uh, you could use Decimate, but we can also go into Sculpt Mode and use this Shift-R, Control-R thing again. And... just messing around till it's the right amount. So that, I may have... Maybe too little detail. Oh no, what have I done over here? Um, you really want to make beefy fingers so this doesn't happen. Back when I remesh earlier, I guess I messed up the fingers. I'm just going to leave them like that for the tutorial. But um, the wider fingers you have, and you can move these bones farther apart for your characters, uh, the easier it's going to be. Or you might not want to remesh at the end. But um, I've got to get this down. Triangle count. I'm going to mess up those fingers even more. Like I said. Let me use that. Okay. Uh, that's like quest compatible. You can always use the normal decimate tools. I'm just judging based on faces. 14,000 is... uh. Almost cross compatible. You just double the number of faces to know how many triangles they are. That's still too many. So twenty thousand, forty thousand triangles. I'm I'm okay with that. 
VR chat's okay with that, at least in PC mode. Uh, the fingers are not okay with that, but uh, we're going to let that go for now. Um, so, so we're going to rig it again. Select this. Shift select the armature. Control P, automatic weights. And um, so if I go into pose mode, this control tab, you'll see these are messed up, but for the most part, this is a functioning body. There's a head. I'm not sure how these eyes, the eyes move a lot more than I want. You can always fix that or set up eyes separately uh, using your own methods, but this is good enough for me. Uh, for textures, because this is not mirrored and it's got not perfect geometry, uh, the texturing process isn't going to be perfect uh, with this method. You might want to learn how to retopo properly so you can make very good UV maps. I'm just going to select everything, press U, and click Smart UV Project. And just turn up the island margin a bit. If we go into UV editing, we see that generates um, a way to texture it. Um, I'm going to add a new image, and I'm just going to paint it in texture paint mode, control tab, texture paint, and uh, where do you do this? Over here is what I'm used to doing. I think you can do it from here too. Oh yeah, that's an easier way of getting at it. Um, mode is single image. It's this image. And now we can paint. Um, it's a bit laggy. I'm only painting one side, aren't I? Uh, if we turn fall off, normal fall off, and turn options, two options, occlude and back face calling off. You can paint through it. So then we can get a texture really fast out of it. And you know, if you're paying attention that I'm painting through it, so that stuff up is on the back, so I'm going to paint over it with something. Decided this was hair, so going real quick and uh, throwing some detail on there. All right, this is not the highest detail uh, texture. You can see how these pixels are so small. Trying to add lots of detail, it's not going to show up well. But that's what we're doing for this tutorial. Um, I'll try and make a retopo tutorial once I figure out how to do that properly with Blender, but right now it seems like third party tools are the like like paid tools are the best way to do that. I'm not gonna cover it right now. Um the next step is adding bizemes. Uh good normals. Um no, where right, shape key. Um click the plus a bunch of times. We're going to double click to edit these, and it's easier to do ah, uh, there, and your, which if you say those words out loud, you get an idea of what shape they are. Um, we're going to edit these in sculpt mode. So how we do that, we go into sculpt mode, select the visim you want to edit, so turn this on, just have this on all the time, and you have to turn up the ah, uh, one. So now we're editing ah and we're looking at ah because of these settings. So you can use all these same tools, just make sure you don't use control R or Dentopo because we need to have the same uh, geometry just in different places. So we could say use the grab tool usually to uh, move things around and you can do whatever you like uh, to any part of the body actually, not just the mouth. But, uh, you know, typically it's the mouth. You can, like, cave this in with a control click. And um, there we go. Uh, that's the ah. You can turn that on and off to see how that is. Select there. Uh, you make that sound with your mouth. You look in a mirror. And it goes there. <laughs> Looks something like that. For your. 
It's like an O sound. Yo. These are the ones used by the Cats plugin um, to generate the rest of the visine. You could just use these. You're going to have to set things up more. It takes less time if you use the Cats plugin. This is the only thing I'd use the Cats plugin for in this uh, tutorial. You can Google the Cats Blender plugin to figure out how to install it. But I already have it installed, so I'm going to enable it. And over here, you'll see under Visemes, it's already filled these out because I've already set up the other steps uh, as these specific names. And I'm going to click Create Visemes, and it creates all these other ones. Uh, you can use Sculpt Mode to make the blinking, everything like that. Let me show you. Uh, blink. And turn it up to 1. We're in Sculpt Mode. And I'm going to use the, the caving in tool to make the eyes suck into themselves. You can be creative and do things any way you want. Um, that's my blink. Okay. Uh, any other steps? Eye tracking is already set up because it has the bones. I'm going to have to do that in Unity. I'm using the VR Chat Creator Companion now. Uh, it seems to be working pretty well now. Um, it was a little iffy at first, but um, I would highly recommend using this because it just makes sure uh, you have the right files and everything like that, everything set up properly. It does it for you. It's just a lot easier than doing it on your own. And so many times people tell me they have issues and it's because they set it up improperly or just something out of their control broke that would have been fixed by this. So I do recommend that. Um, we're going to export this by the way, and we have to export the texture to, uh, I'm not sure if I have it saved. Put it on quest. Mm, no. Um, let's see. I have too many projects. This is one I made for tutorials. Vitaris Sculpt. And uh, you can use the default presets. I have my own. Uh, it does work a little bit better if you apply FBX all. Um, and sculpt man, I'm going to call him. Now I'll move. There he is. There's the textures missing. Um, you go to image, save as, and then I go to that recent folder. Oops. Save that. There we go. Now we have the texture. And if you just drag it on, okay. Wow, that's a terrible texture. I like it. it, it it's very um, Joker-ish. But uh, I would spend a little bit more time on that, but it's not the focus of the video. You want to show that um, you put the avatar descriptor component on this avatar. You can auto detect the visemes. You can set up the eyes. You type in eye. Make sure it's the left eye, not the end bone. And so that works. We can add the blink. And add these. I'm sending them to none. And other than setting it to humanoid, remember when I advised you use that um, default armature at the beginning? This is why there's no errors. Oops, what am I, what am I doing? There's no errors up here. You do sometimes have to go into configure and fix everything. You may want to do that anyway. Um, let me save this quick. Tar. Okay, so I hit configure on the rig and got the chest, got the head, it's got left and right eye. It looks good. Um, this is now ready to upload, I think. You'll have to hit auto fix on some things as usual, but 
you can see it's good performance because I remeshed it uh, down in detail and the fingers are broken, but otherwise just fine. So there you go. You can make pretty much anything with this now and unlike this Sculpt Trees video, uh, this is updated software and um, you can actually do the visings and everything in Blender and hopefully you can follow through all this and get creations of your own and I'd be happy to see them. So please enjoy and see you next time.